Grand Roofing, quick tip for you. If you've sustained some wind damage, weather damage, ice damming, whatever the case may be, you got damage and you got water actively coming into your house during melting snow, ice dam, or rain. Some things you can do to cover your roof to mitigate further damage. Uh, touch on a couple of things with insurance and some couple of things. So let's just get into it. If it's uh, windy, hopefully you can hear me. I put the dead cat on today, cut back on the wind. So let's get into this right down here and show you some tips and things to watch for. You want to tarp the affected area so water doesn't continue to get in. But if you just put your tarp down and you don't go up over the ridge or tuck under, water's going to get under your tarp and down. If it is ice dam and it melts off, then you know it should not leak any further past that point. But it had some prolonged periods and actually this lower slope section right down here caused a spot to rot and put a little dip in it. So even though we're getting above freezing temperatures, there's no chance of ice dam, it's still gonna leak because the water up here running down is getting into this uh, like little pocket, little dead pocket area, dripping in in areas and dropped her ceiling, caused some pretty good damage inside. Uh, touch on the insurance part of that here in a minute. If you want to come up and do this, disclaimer, I'm just some random roofer on the internet. Don't take my advice. I'm not saying go out and get up on your roof and get hurt. That's not what I'm saying. Just bringing up some things to watch for if you do decide to. It's up to you to take care of yourself and be safe. With that out of the way and said, let's get back to this. So if you use a tarp, it's important that you go up over the ridge. I advise against it. It's a lot of tarp, a lot of expense. It causes some more collateral damage putting the tarp on. You don't need to do that. Get a smaller tarp, tuck it under your shingles or synthetic paper like we've got comes on a roll and you just go up past this till you cover your area and then tuck it under. So we'll talk about that. Because of it's a low slope, I wanted to go over the edge. I don't want it wicking back up under. So I just barely went over the ridge, uh, the eave here, and I've got caps kind of high spaced a little ways right up into the edge metal so when the repair gets done the edge metal comes off new piece covers it you're good no damage to the fascia board that little hole will be covered be careful of the rotted spot at the top where you're going to make that go under i took the roll this is a half pass here but basically put your roll just so it laps right about here it's important it goes there roll it your length you need but don't cap nail this I did it to about here, cut the additional bottom half off and threw it up over this side. Take a flat bar. I left this one loose so I can show you. Pop the seal strip free all the way down. It's important that you go that high because any water coming down, getting in where the shingles come together here, you're going to have them every time there's a new shingle tab. Water coming down during a monsoon, heavy rain, it's going to get in these keyways and it's going to go under your tarp if you were to say stop it here or wherever. So you want to make sure water that gets in here gets onto your tarp paper. So you want to make sure it goes up far enough. Once you've split that seal strip free, take your flat bar and tuck that paper up under past this point right here. Okay. Once you're done there, you just take your cap nails and throw them down. If I haven't said, use cap nails, not hand nails. They have a much bigger gripping sur uh, surface tension area, surface area. If you use hand nails in some strong winds, this will just kind of tug and flap and eventually tear free. I definitely recommend cap nails. I'll leave a link to the cap nails down in the description. You can pick them up on Amazon or find them there. Check the link out. It is an affiliate link at no additional cost to you. If it's something you think you might need, it does again. It helps the channel out. So check it out if it's something you think you might need. And little mag hatchets is my favorite. I'll link that up in there too. I cover that quite a bit. That way any water coming down, it gets onto your paper, bypasses your damaged area off of your roof until you can get your insurance out here to get it taken care of or a contractor scheduled. On the insurance, if you have storm damage, legitimate storm damage, your insurance company will cover it. So it goes back a little ways. I said, you don't necessarily maybe want to put yourself at risk up here. Insurance should cover it. So why do that? Have a contractor come out and do it, saving you the time, the headache, the trouble, the danger, and your insurance should cover that. If you are going to, or if they are going to, maybe get some photos before and after. That way, if your adjuster comes out and needs to see it, you don't need to yank it off. Uh, you got some pictures, some photos, they can just see the damage prior to the tarp covering it. Couple tips for you. If you liked the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, again, at no cost to you, it takes nothing. Just hit the button, it does help the channel here. Help support us so we can get out there to a broader audience and share what we know with others. Hopefully it helps. If you got some benefit from it, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next video. If you know anyone that needs any info like this, has some roof damage, tag them. Uh, well, you can't tag them on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, but uh, share it. Share the link. Hit the share button. That's it. That's what we greatly appreciate. Uh, until next time, be safe and see you then.